ladies and gentlemen, wasn't planning on making a video today, but I built this one up, threw it together in a few minutes thinking, oh, I had a really cool Boros list that could use some nice reanimation upgrades like Atraxa. And then I was thinking, why not add Black for Cruelty of Gix and the Harvester, who is just everywhere because Rakdos is the best right now. And I went into ranked with this deck and I smashed three wins in a row, completely comboing off. The third one being Exaxi's Lethal on turn five without even hitting a Fable. It was really, really cool. So I've inspired myself kind of last minute to make a video out of this deck. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy. I hope we combo off and uh, we'll break the deck down at the end of the video. Well, we do like this hand, but no black makes it a bit clunky for the Harvester. We have to have a lot of white because we really like the uh, the white invoke. So that'll happen sometimes. That's okay. I still feel confident with this uh, this deck's ability to stabilize. We got the fables, lots of action. The type of hand that you could just barely afford to keep on the play, but if you were on the draw, it would maybe be just too slow. If you were against Mono Red and they played a uh, Monastery Swift Spear or something, turn one, you'd be instantly regretting having kept. I wonder what we're going to discard here. Definitely get Troxa. I would like to discard a second card to try to get as deep as we can towards our next reanimation spell. Definitely no blocks. We have a potential hit right now for reanimate Atraxa turn 5 here. No, we whiff, we whiff. That's okay. Smash in for damage. Home decides to trade. And we'll end the turn with our Wandering Emperor up. Would have been a good turn as well to do Fable and Blood Tithe Harvester. Maybe, maybe that is what I should have done. Fable into Fable is a pretty strong play. Oh, I'm maybe missing a land drop here. Yeah, it looks like he is. Well, that's rough. That is rough for opponent. Still have no good attacks here. The uh, the bank buster can get crude and block. Ah, oh, there's a reanimation spell. Nice. Very nice. Let's send it, right? What else are you going to do but send it in this scenario? Yeah. Cut down. That's, that's something, but... I don't know. I feel like this is pretty hard to beat. All right. Battle, uh, sorcery. Uh, which creature do we want here? I guess Atali, right? We're pretty close to just hard casting, so let's go with it. And a land. What a beautiful mitt full of cards that was. I feel like opponent's uh, really in need of a board wipe if he's going to try to win this game, so let's start plussing this Wander Emperor. No attacks, a 3-3 first strike does not attack well into a 4-4. Four -four. Yeah, feeling solid here, guys. Feeling right solid. Yeah, that's what you have to do, for sure, for sure. But, like... Is it enough? I, what's better, hard casting Atali here, or just reanimating Atraxa again? Nice two invasions can reanimate uh, 
Wandering Emperor, because it's a permanent. I think we're, we'll go with him. Ah, man. Put a ton of counters on Atraxa. He has another removal spell. It's kind of weak, you know? Let's go with Atali. Cast a couple free things here. Doesn't have the mana to invoke despair. We could hit some pretty big things off our library. Hit invoke despair off opponents. Yeah. Hard to regret doing that. Does he sack his reflection first? So he doesn't have to sack an enchantment? Gives me an extra card? No. Does it want to give me the card? I think this is a, a scoopable point for opponent here. We got enough lands. Yeah, what can he do, right? It's tough when these uh, reanimation decks combo off. Hard to answer. Turn 5 Atraxa just puts too much value in your hand. Especially when you hit 4 card types like we did. Battle, sorcery, land, creature. It's a lot. Opponent's got the mitt full of removal. It's pretty nice. But, like, not even close to being enough. I almost wanted to start smashing on opponent here. Smash opponent for seven? Oh my god, that's, yeah. That's... That's disgusting. I hit two Invoke the Spares with a Tali off opponent's library. It, you almost always want to pick a Traxum when it's available, but in this specific scenario, we already had a mitt full of cards. You know, we're looking at six cards in hand at the end of our turn. You know, there's no point in loading up your hand. You just Atali and try to get a crazy board state. Our first Atali was kind of lucky hitting the, uh, the Invoke. But I hit a Rafine out of our library where, you know, it could hit a portal or something really nasty. I'm pretty happy with the way this deck's working out. So this is kind of like last hand. Last game that I was just talking about where it's kind of just okay to keep on the play. There's a couple combo pieces here. Like, here we have everything we want to do the thing, you know? I'm about to talk myself into keeping a bad hand. Like, this hand is bad because if opponent's fast, we're just dead. We don't do anything until turn three. But this hand is good because turn three, Fable. Turn four, Attack. Make a treasure token with the Goblin Shaman. Turn... And then turn four, Cruelty of Gix. Reanimate the Atali. Win the game? All right, well, let's do it for science. <laughs> I started that speech with the intention of telling you why it's good to mulligan bad hands. And I finished that speech with, what's the worst that could happen? Uh, we lucked out. So it looks like we're going to see no, uh, no big aggression from opponent here. We draw a gopher throat to slow him down if he does resolve something. Perfect. Only two Gopher Throats in deck, and I draw them both back to back. Hmm. Weird. Looks like we're gonna do it, guys. Twice in a row. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, yes. Good game. Good game. I think it's too disrespectful to say good game to opponent right now. Although I'm pretty confident that I just could. You know what? I'm going to do it. Not to be disrespectful. Just to just to let him know that he could safely scoop now and save us, save us both some time, you know? It's not his fault that standard is broken and that reanimation decks just pop off turn four every time. So we did it for science, and uh, the science says that 
keeping three combo pieces with nothing to do turn one or two is worth it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Isn't that nasty? Like, there's too much for opponent to have to answer here. Thanks, dude. Feels bad. Feels bad crushing like this. Yeah, that's good. But I don't think it's anywhere near what he needs. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we were fiends informant. We're happy to discard creatures that we're going to get to reanimate for free off of portal. We smash for seven. And we'll hold the gopher throat. For now. Since there's nothing, uh, no threat of I'm copying anything. Another Invoke Despair. Yeah, we have a perfect sack target for that. Another something to reanimate and or exile there. And that's a good game, right? Actually, no disrespect, brother. Big Zaxis right now. Yeah, 10. And then one from there. <laughs> Pretty clean, guys. Pretty clean. I don't know. Kind of OP, am I right? Hmm. I don't really love this hand. It's kind of bad, but... It does have three lands, Rafine's Informant, Invoke Justice. All we're missing is one combo piece, or one item to the combo. These Rafine Informants, they could come out swinging, too. Now you resolve them, there are three, three powered creature on turn two. There's a duress, okay, so probably there goes Invoke Justice. Yeah. Opponent recognizing to take the combo piece there wisely. I don't think we'll be needing Farewell against Opponent, although Portal is probably even better to bin here. Really want to bin Farewell just because he knows about it. I think I will. We'll play with the information game here. Get him for three, pass. Opponent plays a fable. We go for throw it now. We top deck a land. Play Wandering Emperor. Ah, can't always be right. And we brick. We brick on our draws. So we don't draw a single land. That happens. We drew four cards. Uh, thanks to the extra one from the Rafine's Informant. There's the land now. One doesn't know about the Wandering Emperor, so let's just hold it and pass. That's what I was talking about, too, when I said on turn two, a three drop can do some work. Opponent's already on 11, just from taking three hits from Rafine's Informant. Make disappear. Yeah, okay. So, probably no Atalis from opponent then. Okay. Almost down at seven. We're not feeling super strong here. Yeah, so he's got to pay two life to kill a three three. It's not not the worst thing I've seen. Excuse me. So let's resolve this. I think we instantly bend the portal. All right. The single blood type harvester is representing nearly lethal. If he has a shield or th something, he really doesn't want to play it because we just go for throat smash with three, and he's on two. So opponent incentivized to use the information he has to just kill the blood type harvester. Corpse appraiser, that's not bad. It's better than shielded because this does something right away. Couple cards off the top are lethal here. Uh, invoke the white invoke, invoke justice. Put some counters there. Uh, Wandering Emperor, anything that reanimates the Wandering Emperor. 
This is, of course, all assuming he doesn't have a counter spell, which he does not. And that's lethal. Exactsies, boys. Yeah, we reanimate the, the Wandering Emperor plus one it, and that's four damage. Cha-ching! I like the look of this hand a lot. We are once again missing a powerful creature to discard. But that's okay. We'll have lots of chances to find it with the Rafine's Informant, as well as the Fable the Mirror Breaker. One thing we've got to be mindful of here is we have two sources that do not produce white. So just be aware that sometimes you may not be able to resolve Invoke Justice turn five or whenever you have five mana available. Which one of these two would I rather been here? Probably just Atraxa. Yeah. It would be nice to see opponent go really wide in these first couple turns and then just smash him with the depopulate. I'm going to play the white mana just in case I want to invoke justice next turn, which is looking very possible the way things are playing out. I will not attack here because I want a creature of each color so that Skrelv can't just make this unblockable. This seems like a good time to just reanimate Portal. Ideally, opponent, uh, opponent plays another creature for me to get. By get, I mean make him sack with Portal to Phyrexia. He should choose white here, yeah, because he knows I don't want to block with the Shaman. Very smart. I won't. I won't block. I would rather get the Portal to go off. I go all the way to four, and he gives me exactly what I want here. Oh, I need to hit another untapped land, another untapped white source. Whoops. It can't be this haunted ridge. But if I whiff, I could still just hard cast depopulate. But I'll discard this haunted ridge. I'd rather have a fable. I do miss. Damn. Let's put him a 15. White. Not very happy with what we drew there. We drew uh, two bombs, well, three big bombs in a row. That's okay. The depopulate really slowed opponent down. Gotta be careful, though. Four poison counters is awfully close to 10. Charge of the Mites, okay. And then a Skrull's Hive. So, we should resolve Portal of Phyrexia this time, almost for sure this time, right? Because the odds of us missing on three draws, very low. And we hit already. But we're going to get two more draws anyways. And... Go like this. Is it rude to say good game now? I don't know. I don't mean it as a rude way. I do worry that people will take it as a rude thing. That's not the point. Certainly not. So I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it respectfully. Good game, sir. You were quite a gentleman. Sorry, things had to be this way. <laughs> that is uh, that is one reality of this deck. I do find myself feeling a bit bad for opponent every time I smash a portal into play. Does portal target them, or just since each opponent sacks three things? Yeah, each opponent sacks three things. Your deep salvation is kind of huge. You know, one mana, you and permanence, you control, gain hexproof. It beats off duress and all kinds of other cool stuff. 
invoked a spirit's target opponent, so maybe that's what it's there for, is for a little, a little fuck you to the constant invoked spirits from the mono black decks and the Rakdos decks. That could be it. Let's uh, let's play one more game here. I'll play it right now. Bit of a shorter video today, but uh, kind of didn't have too much time. And I, like I said, I wasn't even planning on recording, and then I did. So no regrets. It's going well. I like the deck. It feels really cool. It's a little bit different than the typical reanimation lists you see, other than of course the fact that it's reanimating Atraxas, Atali's, and it's using Cruelty of Gix. But with the addition of Portal, Portal, and White, I really like the uh, Invoke Justice. So this is the type of hand that can be super aggressive. Alright. Doesn't look like we're going to get a, a quick win against Control by beating them down with a couple of three powered creatures, but... Nevertheless, they'll have the ability to combo off later. Bane's Informant comes in, is a 3 2 for 2, draws us the card, and puts a track exactly where we want her. That's that's really good, man. That's a good common. I'm a fan of Rafine's Informant. What do you got? You know what? I think I just convinced myself. Rafine's Informant for the thumbnail. Yep. Yep, 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 she did it. What else for the thumbnail? I feel like Atraxa has to be there, right? It's kind of like the namesake of any reanimation deck right now. Although if I just put, like, Cruelty of Gix and Atraxa in the thumbnail, then it's just another reanimation deck, right? I don't have to show off that you're doing cool things. Maybe it'll be Informant Invoke Justice in Atraxa. Hmm... Hmm. I'll just take here. I don't want to do a bad block for nothing. So he's only paid it once. So next turn. Next turn he could just kill my thing. Make this a three. Smash me for three. I'm on ten. This kind of low. It's okay. I don't mind going at ten. Does he have the Gopher Throat or something for Blood Tithe Harvester? Perhaps he just pays three and grows the Sleeper and attacks again? Gets me for four? Not a play I almost ever see, but yeah, you know what? I like it here. I think that was a good play by opponent. Respect, my friend. Respect. I'm still in the same boat as before. I don't feel like doing any bad blocks for nothing. So I shall instead... In a Cruelty of Gix, because I feel like this is just the superior reanimation spell. Okay. And we're in good shape here, honestly. I feel like we're going to win this race. So, I'm not even going to think about it. I'm just going to trust my gut feeling that says we're going to win the race. I'm not going to do any math or any consideration here. Just going to smash... Hmm. I don't like that. What, I'm on five now? Five indeed. Alright, well, let's go get a Traxa. That must be killed. Maybe a Traxa for sure. I mean, Cruelty of Gix doesn't take Invoke Despair out of his hand, so there's no point doing that. We have an 11 11. Alright, battle, land, enchantment, and creature. Beautiful. If he has two invoke despairs in hand, it's game. There's nothing I could do. Okay. That's good. Bad.
Uh, hmm. That's very bad. Okay, we're on three. We're on three, and we want to gain life as soon as possible, and or... And or kill that shield as soon as possible. So the problem is, if I invoke justice now... I don't have any mana to cast anything else. And then he probably just has a removal spell or something to make me sack a track, so then I lose, though. So I don't think that's really an option. Instead, I want to try to go wide while also... I can't draw any cards either, because if I draw cards, Shielded kills me. So, Sanctuary Warden, also not an option. So, I think that just leaves Rafine's Informant and Fable with a chump block. That's awful, though. It's awful, man. Okay. I guess the only the only line I see that could possibly win is just praying and hoping that opponent doesn't have uh, a removal spell. And if he has it, he wins, so... There's the gopher throat we wanted, but yeah, it's probably a good game. Probably a good game here, buddy. This card, six cards, whoops. Alright, I'm not even looking. It's dis discarding. Almost for sure, he's got five. Four cars in hand, he's gotta have it, right? Yeah, what a jerk going to the second main phase to do it. What a slow roll that was. Well, you can't win them all. That'll happen. My point was aggressive, and I uh, I made a mistake thinking I could win the race. I could have definitely played a little bit more conservative towards my life total. I somehow forgot about Invoke Despair for a minute. The one card that's absolutely everywhere in every black deck there is, and every deck is black because of it. Rah. Ah, that's okay. GG, GG. So here's the deck. We got to see it do its thing multiple times, very consistently. Really like the white for a few reasons here. Depopulate, super good for stabilizing. Wandering Emperor, also really good. Gaining life as it comes in. This interaction is incredible. The fact that you can flash in Wandering Emperor, minus two their guy. Then next turn, uh, you know, also gaining you two life, kind of stabilizing, killing their biggest threat that's tapped. Next turn, you minus one it, it dies right away. Then you invasion of Tilvada, bringing back the Wandering Emperor that just died from the minus one. Then you minus two something else. And then all of a sudden you've gained four life and made a 2-2 a two -two with uh, with these this two-card combo. It's a really nice interaction. Then invoke justice, putting a bunch of permanents on your cards, on your uh, two drops. Sometimes the Shaman is kind of nasty. Like, you saw that one game that we were playing against, what was it, Grixis, where we had the Rafine's Informant come down and be a three power creature turn two and just smash for three, three, three. All of a sudden, opponent's on 11. And uh, and then you just invoke Justice, you put four more counters on it, and then that, that little three, two, two drop is a seven-powered creature who's smashing in for... Lethal in two turns. So really like that interaction. And uh, of course the portals to Phyrexia is a feels bad moment for opponent. Anytime they have three creatures in play and you bring this back and they sack their whole board and you start reanimating something disgusting every turn. I.e. the usual suspects, Atali, Atraxa. In this deck's case, also one Sanctuary Warden. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. That's going to be it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was super fun to pilot, super fun to play. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. Thanks. Bye-bye.